Okay. All praises be to the Most High. Ahaya in the name of Yeshaya. Um, a few things uh, has happened uh, this last week that have come to my attention. And I wanted to talk about it, and I thought that we would use that as a springboard for this particular class that can actually give us wisdom beyond the topic. But anyway, uh, we've noticed Eldon brother, great brother, uh, Gabar Yasha Allah in New York. Shalom, I know he's probably looking right now. Uh, we noticed, uh, well, I think uh, Shapat brought it to my attention about the, the debate between uh, the Gathering of Christ Church with Elder Gabar in the House of Consciousness, I think in relation to P Polite and others. Uh, we also received some email uh, based on this with people on either or other, either side of opinion concerning its importance and whether or not this is something that we should even do. Uh, and all points are valid on either side. I'm not in disagreement with those who say that, uh, for those who say that uh, we're wasting our time, I'm not in disagreement with those, for, for those opinions. And I'm not in disagreement with those who say that, you know, it's about time to show you that on either side, it's so polarized on either side that it's nothing I can disagree with. I have to let the Most High do what he do. <laughs> I have to allow his spirit to operate and see what comes of it. Uh, and that's why even though some people say, well, we shouldn't do this and we are above that and all that, I think it's important I've seen situations where Christ walked into a synagogue with, with the whole house was against it. And he, he had to show them light nonetheless. And it's to a point where you, you must be able to condescend to those of low estate if you believe that you have understanding they don't. So all in all, it's an opportunity. But that leads us to this class. Let me go into it. When I look at, and I'm just, I'm not, keep in mind, I'm not leaving anyone out here when it comes to nations. But just right now, speaking on the plight, plot of our people. When I say our people, the Bible states that the people of the Bible are the children of Israel. We believe we are part of those people like the blacks in America who have been scattered, those that went, uh, that were carried away in cargo slave ships. We believe we fit those prophecies, all right, concerning the curses of the children of Jacob. So when it comes to the children of Israel, there's a dispute that won't allow us to come together. Whether you call that black consciousness, whether you call that Israelites, whether you call that black Muslims or black Masons or, and let me just use the black thing as an example. And you can just add, you can just spread this to any part of the 12 tribes of Israel because we all are dealing with the same thing worldwide. There's a disconnect, and you have those outside of Israel looking at this disconnect as a point of confusion and as a weakness that can be totally exploited from the outside. <laughs> you understand? That means the world powers that are over, that's over this world, that are being controlled through Satan, relish in our disagreements, our weaknesses, and the, and the misunderstanding concerning ourselves and our God. 
Well, some out there may say, well, why can't we just agree to disagree? Agree on the points we can agree on and come together under that. Well, that's going to be answered, too, within this class. So before the class began, what I did was I sat, um, uh, I sat with, with my brothers here at, at a table and say, well, listen, let's talk about this for a second. Let's actually in good earnest go into the mindset of why our brothers and sisters and black consciousness and others can't come to the knowledge of the truth we acknowledge and, and in good earnest without attacking them, without degrading them, without condescending. Let's get some understanding of why they feel the way they feel. And how can we re reach across spiritually to let them know that it's not about a debate to win? And it's not about who, can, who, who, know more, who has more knowledge on this point or who has more knowledge on that point. What is the truth? So I thought that I would take this as an opportunity to bring forth some understanding. Because no matter what we debate as a church, and you know we're with, we're together. Myself and Elder Gabar and all of the brothers in this church are together. At the end of these conversations, it doesn't matter if you are a Muslim, it doesn't matter if you are an Israelite. That's good, thank you, thank you. It doesn't matter if you are a Muslim, it doesn't matter if you're an Israelite, it doesn't matter if you are an Egyptologist, it doesn't matter what you think you are. At the end of this, here, here are the points that we must come to one agreement with if we are to one day be together. Okay, <clears throat> period. The number one thing is, and I'm going to preference this first before I go into the class. Who are we? No one can direct anyone. If every, if every person in the room or a fraction of the room believe there's something different. Be because with what they believe come a set of laws that may disagree with another part of the group that's in the room or the part of the congregation. See? So if we can't agree on who we are together, we'll never come to one consensus. So how is that resolved? And I'm saying that at the end of all this, Instead of, because I noticed listening to these brothers, and I listened to them for like 30, 40 minutes, to the point where I'm like, okay, you have so many individual ideas and understandings. It's so much confusion that one person can bring out one thing and another person can start bringing out something entirely different. No one ever comes to a consensus. So things have to be placed on the table that, that at the end of this, it's a consensus. Who are we? If we don't know who we are, this whole conversation and this walk, this life is futile. Because without knowing who we are, we miss what? Our purpose. We don't know our purpose. The next thing, why are we here? What were we born for? Why do we exist? Why have we been born in such depravity, poverty? How do we come to such a pass? Now, if two people that, that are impoverished are arguing, and I'm, I'm not talking about the, the debate at all because I've debated many times, but I'm saying it's time to come to a consensus. Any of us, if you have two people that are impoverished, that are just arguing about who got more knowledge than the other, it's still two people impoverished. 
<laughs> you understand? The powers that be that control this whole satanic grid could care less who's the smartest between the two impoverished. They could care less because they relish off of the disagreements. The next and the most important point that we must come to a consensus with is who is the most high. Mm -hmm. Who is the most high? See, and when we say the most high, some people call him God. Okay, the Muslims or the black Muslims amongst us call him Allah. Okay, those uh, there's a number of our people now that are going into the Asian Buddhist realm, the Orient realm of learning about God and is calling on Buddha. The Egyptologist who knows who they're calling on or the black consciousness movement. Now, the first point that I would like to bring out of why we can't come together is what? Give me my book real quick, if you don't mind. It's in my bag. The first point of why we can't come together. Again. It's in my car. Here you go. It's right here. The water. Appreciate it. It's right here. The Bible. Let's talk about this first. Let's talk about the Bible first. You have some out there that believe that the Bible was plagiarized from other historical records that were in place before the Bible was compiled. I hear that a lot. Who knows? I'm ch just to play an advocate here or someone on the other side of this. If that was so, and if that's so, the person that produced this claim must bring proof of plagiarization, which means they must give me the person that plagiarized it, or they cannot make that claim. You can't say because this relates to something in your story that it, it must have been taken. That's not enough. You must show proof of who plagiarized it. That's number one. Number two, there's claims of contradiction in the Bible. But how can one bring contradiction or draw contradiction from, from a book they have not read or understood? Which means if you started off, started off not believing in the Bible based on someone bringing you what they would perceive as contradictions, you've already been put off from, from the Bible itself. You haven't studied the Bible from a non-biased aspect. So now when you go into the Bible, you'll see those contradictions because you were taught the contradictions first. That can easily be resolved if you actually went to someone who understood the Bible. Those, those and others we're going to talk about within this class today. 
but we're going to also show you the importance of the Bible. Why, if we are to come together, we must come to an understanding that the Bible is the key chief book that should be used for unity. And you might ask me why? Because the majority of our people are already in it. So if there's a point of unity to bring consciousness and oneness, why can't we start with the book our people are already reading? There is laws that can unify us in the book. Right? You can't say go outside of what the majority of people are reading and say that's the answer. Because a lot of us are not going to follow Egyptology. A lot of us are not going to follow some African religion. Why? We're not going to follow it because we, we see the end result. We look at our condition. We see what we're going through as a people. And we're looking at brothers and sisters who are upholding a doctrine that can't explain how we fell. If we were so great, as you mentioned, you would give us the timeline and the history that led to our demise. I can find that in the Bible. I can not only say how great we were as a people. I can show you step by step, kingdom by kingdom, our fall <clears throat> that led up to America. So this is nothing to be debated or disputed. It's historical fact that we as a people went from where? We went from the Assyrian captivity to the Babylonian captivity, from the Babylonian captivity to the Persian captivity, from the Persian captivity, to the Grecian captivity, from the Grecian captivity, to the Roman captivity, from the Roman captivity leading, leading up to 70 AD, we ran into the wilderness, into Africa, leading up to who? To what we call the American captivity. That's a line that cannot be broken through history, that can be proven through history that substantiate the Bible. Now, why should we go into the Bible first? Why? Because I'm not in disagreement when it comes to looking at other material. Just to see what our people are dealing with. But we must have a fundamental foundation to come together. Something, a parameter, a measuring tool so that we're not taken off course through every book that have been written. We must have a fundamental foundation first to agree on. Right? And we know the powers that be don't like these conversations. And that's why I agree with 100% of what Elder Gabar is doing. Because it's a step. It's a step. First thing. Let's get Hosea 4 and 6 out of the Bible. Of the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. Read. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed what? For lack of knowledge. We are destroyed as a people because we lack the knowledge of the Most High. His knowledge is stored someplace. And I'm going to say this. And I'm going to put this out there. 
by others claiming that the Bible was plagiarized from older material. That means they know something is in it they agree with, but still disagree with it. If it's plagiarized, well, why don't we come together under the book and show all of our people how to come together under the good information that was plagiarized then? Mm -hmm. They're already in the book. They're raised in the church with the Bible. So get all the information that's good that was plagiarized and let's get them together under that using the book they already have without moving them anyplace else. But this, th this actually goes higher than just disagreeing with the book. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go into that too. There's a reason spiritually brothers and sisters disagree with going into this book. That's spiritual. We're going to get that in a moment. Read that again. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That means there's a fundamental knowledge we lack. That if we don't come to this understanding, we'll stay a destitute and destroyed people. Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Hold up now, because what? Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Now, this is the first thing we must look at now while viewing the Bible. What is the book that all the black consciousness community agree with rejecting? What book? They can all come to the agreement of, of, of their own philosophical ideas of how we came to this and how we're being... Uh, 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 treated like second-class citizens and what the white man is doing and what this that they can all agree to that but what is the one fundamental thing they all agree to reject when really we found it was the answer the whole time the answer was staring us in the face the problem was we related our condition under our captivity we related those people that, that did this to us with the Bible in total ignorance, not realizing it was the Bible the whole time that got us through captivity. It was the Bible that got us through the understanding of our connection with it. To the point where they even had to change the King James Version and just give everybody a new version because they knew it bear witness with our spirit. They knew that we would see the light through it. And that we would come with the consensus of why we came to this, to such a pass. And began to cleave to it as a people and say, you know what, this is the answer. Let's follow the law, statutes, and commandments our fathers walked away from and unify under our God. They knew this. Read. Because thou has rejected knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. We have been rejected. Read. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Because we forgotten what? The law of thy God. Because with this knowledge comes a law, brothers and sisters. The laws are contained in, in the Bible itself. The laws are contained in the Bible. We come back and all these people who claim that the Bible is tampered with and that they shouldn't receive the Bible. What in the Bible do you disagree with? What's wrong with it? You understand? Everything in the Bible is right concerning how we should treat each other, how we should be as a people. Everything. It's against homosexuality. It's against immorality, killing and stealing and adultery. It's against disrespect. It's against covering what is thy neighbors. It's against you treating someone wrong. Why can't we unify under it as a start? You know why? Because it takes power from the proud. Hmm. That's why. 
The proud cannot fall under any level of, of obedience. Don't you think that's why we're in this condition? Because of our pride? Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. We are rejected, read. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Because we have lost the law of our God, the Bible says that we would, what? read that last part again. I will also forget thy children. We were forgotten. We are the children of of the people that walked walked and went against the laws in this Bible. So when I look at a room of a bunch of people sitting on a sofa bringing different opinions and none of them, everyone is bringing a different opinion, that bear record to us losing our law, that bear record to, to everything the Most High said would happen to us. When I see all these people kicking knowledge and everybody like, yeah, yeah. Well, let me give it an opinion. Let me give it an opinion. No. Where's, where's the most high's word that we all must agree with outside of our opinion? See? Our children have been forgotten. We are the children that lost everything due to the curse of our fathers. See, that's the only thing that can resolve what we've been through. And I'm going to tell you, the biggest problem we have, we, even in understanding the truth and those who know they're Israelites, the biggest problem we have when we come to this truth, is we don't aim. How, how can I put this? We really don't deal with this correctly when we first get the understanding of the Bible and why we come in, why we're in this condition because we begin to aim anger towards others instead of understanding it was our fathers that sinned. I think that's one of the biggest issues that when we do get the truth, and I'm speaking about, about Israelites now, we tend to now use it to attack other people. Okay, the Most High didn't do this to us because of other people. He did this to us because of us. So this is not just talking about the black consciousness thing and all that. This is speaking about us as a people, why we can't come together under the Most High. And the key chief place we falter is pride. Everyone want to be looked at as the person that brought the highest knowledge and all this other stuff. And what's amiss in all this? The most high in his son. The purpose, the whole purpose and what's going to happen. And prophecies that, that we can't even go into because everyone is arguing about nothing. Right? So what should we, we be dealing with? Let's first deal with the, the mindset of our people. Let's go to John. Matter of fact, before you go there, let's go to 1 Corinthians 8 and 1. Because everyone has some level of knowledge. But there are levels to knowledge. When we say, when the Bible says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. What knowledge? We're going to tell you right now. The knowledge of our history, the knowledge contained in the Bible. That's the knowledge we're destroyed for. We have knowledge of, of, of our education, what we grew up with, around with our families. So we are knowledgeable people, but we lack the key knowledge. And that's what I see when I see people debating and coming up with different information and saying, well, it was on this papyri and it's on this. They got the knowledge. Of, you can only have the knowledge of what you've studied. <laughs> because now you have to do what? You have to take me to a source. I'm not going to follow what comes out of your mouth. you got to take me to a source, don't you? Yes. And usually that source is referenced someplace in a book, right? And then you're going to ask me to give credit to that book 
while discrediting mine. You see the disparity and the disagreements we would come to then? If you're going to say that this, we can't follow this book because this was a book written by man. When the book you read and honor was written by man. <laughs> so we have to come to a consensus of what knowledge is right to give us the direction to unify. Because why? Read that again. Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. We know that we all have some knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up. But knowledge do one thing. Knowledge can puff one up. Can pump you, puff you up. Can make you believe now you are the emphasis. You are the epitome of what should be looked at for guidance opposed to the most high. See, when someone get a lot of knowledge and adulation and people start telling them how much knowledge and understanding and how great they are, that can be used in reverse. That can be used to harm. So that's what happens when I see all these people talking and everybody bringing this and bringing that. Knowledge have puffed them up. Someone told them they knew something. What if you're wrong? Do you have enough humility to admit it and say, well, listen, I know nothing. That's what it takes to learn the truth. You must be willing to look at everything you've seen and everything you've heard and say, you know what? I was wrong. I'm willing to learn again. If it's about unity and coming together, someone there must be a level of humility someplace. No, you can't have a bunch of rooms with big heads and no one is humble enough to realize they're wrong. When, if, if we're just fighting against each other, we're all wrong. We're all wrong if we're just battling and fighting and, and clawing at each other to see who's at the heap of poverty, who's at the top of the impoverished. Knowledge puffeth up. So now we learn two things about knowledge. Number one is our people are destroyed for a lack of it. Number two, when we get knowledge, it puffeth, we get big heads. <laughs> so you see, knowledge is not always good. Where's the humility? And I'm going to tell you, I'm humble enough to say, you know what? I understand what I know, which is the Bible. And I love the, the wisdom that, com that comes with it. I'm willing to humble myself and not say anything if you can show me. Who's your God and what's your proof that that religion relates to me? What's your source? Where's our laws? Where did we begin and how did we get here? Where's the book? <laughs> you understand? But usually when we put out these questions, we're faced with adversity or conjecture where it'll direct someplace else because the truth is, outside of the knowledge of this Bible, there's, there's really no answers out there. You got a bunch of different books, a bunch of different ideologies, and a, a bunch of different philosophers that never come to the knowledge of the truth. Let's get some more here. Let's get 1 Timothy's in the Bible, 3 and 7. Second Timothy's three and seven, please. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Second Timothy, chapter three, verse seven. Go ahead. Ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You can have people who are ever learning. That means they you can they always read in a book. They're always reading some understanding, have, have a library, their whole room is a library. 
ever learning, but what? And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning, intelligent, but they don't have the knowledge from on high. Their knowledge is worldly. I'm going to tell you, not too many people in this earth during its heyday had more knowledge than the Greeks, to tell you the truth. But all of their knowledge was worldly. Their science was worldly. It wasn't knowledge from on high. So our knowledge not only gives us the understanding of our condition and what we should follow, it gives us understanding of what's beyond this world. That's some key information. We don't have to question what happens after this. We don't have to question what will happen. Okay, there's no ambiguity in understanding. Why? Because the prophecies con con contained in this Bible showed us exactly what would happen to our, us if our father sinned. And it happened to us verbatim. Right down to the letter. Exactly everything that was written on the scrolls of the Hebrews that was prophesied happened to us. Everything he said would happen is happening, which is our God. We also understand what happens when the soul leaves the body. We also understand that there will be a judgment on the Gentiles and the kingdoms of this world who have enslaved us. We understand that we will rule according to the prophecies of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our fathers. We understand that the world powers fear these prophecies. See? But the first point, before we can even go there, our struggle is to actually get you into to the book to see what we're seeing. That's the struggle. All the answers and all the things that we've been talking about is in the book. And it's our struggle to actually get our people in the book to see it's us. And what, and what the Most High have for us if we are obedient this time. See, and these are the things that must be emphasized. Right? Read that again. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 7, and 3 and 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Because our people love to kick knowledge. Just to see who can come with, with some deep verbiage or some deep phrase and somebody can look at that and say, you know what? I never, oh, that's deep. Mm -hmm. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And just, I don't want to go off point, but I want to emphasize this real quick. I noticed that one of the key points that, that this black consciousness going there for a moment, movement claims is that they can't follow the Bible because the Bible is a white man book. Do you know that the majority of nations have already left off from the Bible and, and into a new age religion now? They don't even deal with the Bible no more. The majority of the leaders of this earth are now going into Buddhist teachings and atheist teachings. Why? Because the gig is up. We're claiming it now. <laughs> you, so now they can't even claim the book as their own anymore because they know that the prophecies don't pertain to them, don't belong to them. But that's, stick with me here. I got two things real quick I want to read for you. Come on. Concerning knowledge, because the Bible puts a parameter on what knowledge is and what it isn't. Let's go into what knowledge is or isn't, because... Anything, you can have a knowledge of how a stove works. You can have a knowledge of how to, how, how to build a house. That's much knowledge, but that, that don't have nothing to do with the knowledge of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Read. Uh, this is first uh, Ecclesiasticus 19 and 20. Yes. For the fear, the fear of the Lord is all wisdom. For the fear of the Most High. So we must know the Most High and understand his judgment and fear it. And fear breaking his laws. So when we fear him, what? 
The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. Is all wisdom. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. And in wisdom is the performance of the law, the law, statutes, and commandments contained in our Bible. Read. And the knowledge of his omnipotency. Mm. Verse 22. In the knowledge of the Most High's what? Omnipotency. How great the Most High is. Read. Uh, 22. The knowledge of wickedness. The knowledge of wickedness, what's wrong? Is not wisdom. Is not wisdom. The, the knowledge of what's wrong is not wisdom at all. <laughs> you understand? Like, for instance, it's wickedness to worship other gods. Amen, Ra, Horus, or whatever you name. That's wickedness with the Most High. Because these are lesser gods. Children that spawn Nephilim, Nephilim, fallen angels, satanic bloodline, the Anunnaki, all that relates to the war against our God. And I'm just putting that out there for brothers and sisters that are following other gods. You have people, brothers and sisters, who are following gods like Zeus, Hermes, Aphrodite. These are all the same gods that were worshiping Egypt with different names. But they're still lesser gods. It's not the God on high, not the God of our fathers. What else you have? One more, uh, verse 24. Come on. He that have small understanding in the fear of God is better than one that have much wisdom and transgress of the law of the Most High. Read that again. He that have small understanding in fear of God. He that don't have much knowledge and no much understanding, but fear the Most High. Fear of making him mad. Fear angering him. Read. Is better than one that have much wisdom. Is better than those that have read a billion books. And transgress of the law of the Most High. And break the laws of the Most High. And you know what? That leads us to why a lot of people really don't want to deal with the Bible. Not that it's been tampered with. Not that it's the white man's book. Because you know you're doing something the Bible disagree with. You want to continue to be justified in your actions without accountability. And see, that's the main reason because I've never read anything in the Bible that was wrong concerning morality. So why use it as the one book? People can, let me tell you, Af the black African consciousness group or whoever you are, everyone, they can just put books all over the place and acknowledge every book there, but the Bible better not be on the table. What's wrong with that picture? So you have all this knowledge of all these doctors and all this, that, and the other, but someone bringing the Bible, everyone looking at him like, like, you know, like, like, like he's cancer. When the book, when the Bible is the only book that resolves everything, it resolves everything. Now we have no power on how crooks have been using it wrongfully. That's not our fault. Just because some crooks want to be crooks and have the Bible in front of them, that does not discredit the Bible. If you were to read this Bible, read the book, I'm, I'm not just speaking of the Bible, but the whole Bible with the, with the Apocrypha included, you would gain more wisdom than a room full of books because it teaches, teaches us of our God, hmm. our purpose, why we're here, and what happens after this. Right? Anything else, lawyer? Uh, that's it. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Proverbs 4 and 7. Now, a lot of, some of them that may view this, and I know they will view it, they're not going to agree. A lot of them are not going to agree with what the truth is, though. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. You're not going to agree with what the truth is. And I'm going to tell you, we, we, we kind of call ourselves, we don't like to just detach ourselves from Christians altogether because, again, we, we is what you would call pre-Constantine Christians. Before the pagans came in, 
what we're, what we're doing is what the Christians were doing. And I'm going to tell you, even though I have an issue, and not only that, the most high have an issue that Christians, according to Christ, have been hijacked. I'm going to tell you, Christians might not have all the knowledge. I'm talking about Christians who haven't learned this yet. They may not have all the knowledge and understanding that we have come on at this time. But I'll tell you what, they have, a, they have more than a lot of these people that don't believe in the Bible that have a lot of knowledge and understanding mm -hmm. in, in the wickedness of this world. Mm -hmm. Because they fear the Most High. They fear the Most High. They, they, they are obedient to him and they don't want to show displeasure. And I'm speaking of the obedient Christians. They might not have all the knowledge, but they know right from wrong. And they know God is the God. They may not know his name like we do, which is Ohio. They believe Jesus is the first begotten of the Father. They may not know his name like we do, but they, they know he's the son. And they believe on the Christ in the Bible. You understand? So instead of me just, and I'm going to show those that don't believe in the Bible how to deal with that and how to resolve some of these things. Even though I know that Christians don't believe in certain things, I don't just try to crush them and tear them down and say that they're not nothing and I don't want to deal with them. No. I deal with the things we can agree with first and then show them the understanding they haven't received. That's how we come together. Not tear them down and make them feel less than people because they haven't learned what we learned yet. You deal with the things we can agree on first. You believe in Christ? I believe it. I, I believe in Christ. But guess what? There's a lot you haven't been taught about him that I would like to share. First starting with his name, knowing there was no J's. <laughs> so if you want to call on the first begotten of the Father, I'm going to, we're going to show you how to do it without pagan in position, without them influencing our connection with the Most High. What were the, who were the disciples following? His name was Yeshua. See? And we should take this same type of wisdom on how to deal with coming together. We should take that when it comes to the black consciousness movement. If y'all really want to come together, I'm speaking to you all because I know you're going to be listening. If y'all really want to come together with us, these are the things we must come together with. First, you must come to us with what we agree on. <laughs> Find in what you're dealing with what we agree on. Again, if there's something that was plagiarized that we took and put in our book from you, you must produce the information we took from and show us that it was the right thing to do so that we can agree together on it. See? That's wisdom. Instead of saying, well, everything you're dealing with is wrong, I don't want to deal with it. Because you're in that book, I don't want to deal with you. Well, you're going to find out this book is the only answer. I'm going to show you. Read. Uh, Proverbs 4 and 7. Come on. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. See? We must actually have more than knowledge. We must have wisdom and understanding to why we're in this condition. Who's our God? Prophecies concerning how long we have, what's going on in this earth, and how do we resolve this? See, the Bible gives us these answers. We must come together and understand what is the truth. They might not agree with the truth, but I'm mm. about to bring it. <laughs> John 14 and 6. <laughs> Here's the truth.
uh, St. John chapter 14, verse 6. Read. Yeshua saith unto him, I am the way. Who's the way? I am the way. I am the way. The truth. The what? The truth. The, the truth. And the life. And the life. Read. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I'm going to tell you what. I'll tell you what. The Christians got this right. Mm-hmm. The Christians got this 100% correct. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by him. When it mm -hmm. says Christ is the way, that's a road or path that leads to our promise. That means there's no other way. If we don't do this walk exactly how he did it, we're off the path. So automatically, that's a direction. Now, how do we resolve this with everything I'm, I, I was speaking of, of today? If we all in a room and one is a one is a, a Muslim, one is from the Black Consciousness Movement, one is from the Christian Church, one is a Hebrew, and we're all in a room and saying, "Well, listen, brothers and sisters, we can all agree that we're faced with the same common enemy that's looking to destroy us all." What do we do? Everyone in the room can bring an opinion. Right? But suppose there's only one way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now I can say, well, listen. Based on the prophecies that was concerning our people, which came to pass, the Most High would send someone who would give us a direction in this day. And that direction would make it simple for us. Instead of us dealing with our own opinion, here's the walk. Let's do this. And it's exactly how it was directed from the Father. That's me gaining direction from on high and saving myself and my people and help save our people. So instead of now, no man can take credit for this. We all together with the path that we must all walk together. That's a direction. That's a plan. See, <laughs> that's a plan. Now, for those who don't understand Christ and don't know the significance of Christ, I'm going to preference this for, so you, you can understand. And I'm going to just resolve it in a couple of seconds. See? And I'm, and I'm going to try to do this in a way because I don't want to to, to be over someone's head. I'm going to try to do this way where everyone can agree and understand what I'm saying here. There's a purpose that led to Christ. There's a reason why Christ had to come, whom some call Jesus. All right? And I'm going to break it down in a nutshell. It started in the heavens. And I don't care what religion or what philosophy you're from, you all acknowledge that it started, Earth was at a point of creation, which means it must have been created by an entity. It started with God in heaven, right? His heavenly angels, which are also called the sons of God. There was a disagreement where another realm was created that we're living on, okay? There was a revolt in the heavenly realm with the sons of God. Those sons of God that fell became the lesser gods of this earth that all the, all the nations worship today. Lucifer fell and became the chief amongst them to rule this world. The Most High born the, his image in the midst of all this, which is our father Adam, who was supposed to take the dominion and have the dominion as the Most High ruled in heaven. It was relegated through his sin of disobedience by eating, by eating or partaking in knowledge that was given to him by the fallen ones. Through that, hell broke loose because there was a sacrifice that was needed to cover our father and mother, Adam and Eve. Okay? Through that sacrifice, we would now have to build in this earth to a point 
before Adam fell. I'm going to show you how Christ coming. After our father and mother sinned, the Most High said in Genesis, there will be enmity between thy seed and the serpent seed. Now other nations would come out of this one woman and they will be against a chosen race out of the woman. Okay? Cain killed Abel. Cain was being controlled by the other side. So there will be an enemy that will look to kill us throughout this whole existence. The serpent seed. Follow me here. I'm going to show you the importance of Christ. So the Most High would need a pure bloodline throughout the earth until his son, the spirit of the first begotten that was created amongst the sons of God who would come into this earth to be that sacrifice because in the law, there is no redemption without bloodshed. So what happened before the flood? You got it. The serpent seed and all his creation was looking to, dest to destroy this bloodline. All the way down from Adam down to Seth, all the way down through Enoch, down to Noah and his three sons. They were being, they were being protected through that ark, knowing that the serpent seed was looking to kill them and destroy them. The Most High flooded the whole earth to kill off all of the creation that was looking to kill us. The hybrid beings, the dinosaurs, and all the other beings that were created by Satan was made in this earth knowing that we were the sons of God, knowing that there was a prophecy concerning our rise. So the Most High sent a flood. We lived through the flood, and through Shem came, Shem came and grew who? Abraham. Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob. Jacob had 12, 12 sons all together that would be the prophecy of the 12 tribes of Israel. We're from that seed, and we're still the enemy of this world. We're still fighting against the serpent seed. Okay? We went into captivity for a few hundred years in Egypt. Eventually, we got the promised land that was given to our father Abraham. You're following me here. That was promised to our father Abraham. We went into the land and had our law, statutes, and commandments, and we were the only people on the earth serving the higher God. And all the other nations that were born in this earth were following lesser gods, including the Egyptians. They were following the Anunnaki and the fallen angels and Nephilim blood, the same bloodline that was looking to kill us before the flood. Eventually, we wandered from our laws and began to follow the lesser gods, and the Most High punished us based on his promise of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. How can we choose lesser gods over him? So because of that, the most high word was fulfilled that we would fall as a people due to this disobedience. How could we follow lesser gods? So we went in from one captivity to the next, leading up to the Roman Empire, which is the fourth beast of Daniel, where our Christ, our Lord, will be born into this earth to be crucified. Why? Because he was that redemption. In our law, a land without, a bl without blemish was an atonement for our sins according to our law. So that law was fulfilled from the heavenly tabernacle where pure blood needed to be sacrificed so that we could one day stand before you with the truth to tell you that we are the chosen people of the Most High. And when a son was born into this earth, not only would he be a sacrifice, his whole life would be the way we must walk to please the Most High. So that it can resolve us as a people. Eventually we lost our homeland Jerusalem. And we were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Left, left to serve all other people. Until the Most High began to, to revive us like it says in Hosea. And call us back to our true origin. Leaders of this earth. Leaders of this earth. Under God with the truth concerning our fathers. So Christ's blood, Christ's blood was shed so that we could one day become the sons of the Most High again and no longer follow the other nations. In a nutshell, for those who are fairly new, I'm going to just break a few other things down before I finish with this. 
our captivity, us going into slave ships, all the other people looking down on us was prophesied. We fell. And through all this darkness and captivity and, and being treated like second class citizens all over the earth, the Most High sent a light in our last days to resolve our issues, to resolve why we're treated like nothing all over this earth. To let, to let us know that he, he, have, he was with our fathers and he never forsaken us. He's with us now. And that we will now stand as the leaders of this earth once this place crumble. So when it says Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by him, after our fall, following the other nations, he had to send his son in the earth to direct us aright. To show us the difference between serving him and the lesser gods. See that? We don't serve paganism. We don't serve any other God but the high God. The lesser gods is unnecessary. The problems the Christians have, and I'm going to go to the Christians real quick, is they have it all together, but they've relegated, they've pitted Christ against the Most High by saying Christ is God. And they have actually made Christ a pagan God to be worshipped. When Christ was placed here to give us a direction and a way back to the Father. Not to be worshipped, but so that we can worship the Father on his path. On his way. The way he directed the disciples to do so. How he directed our people to do so. What's the truth? Christ. And I don't care what we can agree with when it comes to our captivity and what other nations did to us and what they're planning against us. It doesn't matter what we can agree with if we don't agree on that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Nothing else matters. Go to John 3 and 18. Uh, St. John chapter 3, verse 18. Come on. It says, uh, He that believeth on him. Go ahead. He that believeth on him is he, not condemned. He that believeth on Christ is not condemned. But, he, but he that believeth not is condemned already. You are condemned already. Ready. It doesn't matter how much knowledge you have. Because you don't have the knowledge to get back to the Father. See? <laughs> so your knowledge means nothing if you can't come back to the Most High and humble yourself and acknowledge not only your sins, but you are attached to the sins of your fathers. You, you can't look at our condition throughout this earth and not see that we are living a generational curse. You can't see this. This is generational. This, this is habitual. We see it from generation to generation. It get worse and worse for us. You, you understand? So in resolving that, we are living a generational curse that began someplace. You can only find that, that beginning in the scriptures. In the book of Deuteronomy where the Most High said, let's get it real quick. Deuteronomy 32 and 21 real quick. This is why we, because I don't care who you talk to in the black conscious movement and otherwise, they'll tell you how great we were. They'll tell you how, how great number we were, that we were kings and we invented this and we invented that. But they can never come to the understanding of how we fell as a people and became servants all over this earth. They can never give you a timeline on how it happened. They can't give you none of that. It's like a blank in history that they can't resolve. Read Deuteronomy 32 and 21. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 21. Go ahead. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. We started calling on and worshiping lesser gods. See, the other nations gained glory and power and blessings for worshiping Lucifer because this is his world. See? 
That's why the Egyptians worship their God. Okay? And that's why the other nations, the Grecians and all of them, that's why they worship pagan gods. Because these gods were the lesser gods who became the gods of this world. But that's not for us. Okay? Even though these other, civiliz other civilizations existed and had great history and all that, it's not for us. We they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. We move the Most High to jealousy with that which is not God. Read. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. We provoke the Most High to anger with our vanities. That's worshiping lesser gods. Read. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. So since we put up a no God for me, for the Most High, the Most High put up a no people for us. That's what happened to us. He says, oh, oh, my blessings are not good enough for you, Israel. Oh, well, since you want to worship Ra, since you want to worship Zeus, since you want to worship Tammuz, since you want to worship the gods of the nations, I'm going to put the people who worship those nations, those gods, over you. See? See? Because you cannot worship their God better than them. So you go worship their God. Forget about me. I'm going to show you what, what happens when you fall under their God, their gods. You also fall under those people. Captivity. That's why we served. See? Read. I will provoke, provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. And the, and, and the Most High says he would provoke us to anger with a foolish nation. One thing I can say about these uh, black consciousness guys and all of them, they're angry. A lot of them are, but, yeah, it's time for a revolution. Yeah, they're getting angry and all that. Don't understand. But the Most High says he would do this. He would provoke us to jealousy with what? A foolish nation. A foolish nation. Because those that are ruling this earth are fools. Okay, they're fools. They don't acknowledge our God. They're Luciferians. They're fools. That's our job. We're supposed to be the bearing light in this earth. We're supposed to, to bring forth the light from on high. Right? Let's go back. Matthew. The 15th chapter in the 16th verse. Now I'm going here because we don't expect everyone to understand this, even those with knowledge. Only the Most High and the Holy Spirit can reveal the truth to you. Uh, St. Matthew chapter 15 verse, verse 16. 16. Now when Christ was on the earth, he spoke to the disciples and he spoke to Peter in general and asked Peter, who do you say I am? Yeah, 16. Yeah, excuse mm -hmm. me. You got it? Yes, sir. Chapter what? Uh, Matthew 16 and 15. Matthew 16 and 15. Turn that around. Read. Uh, St. Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? So Christ asked Peter, one of his disciples, who do you say I am? Now, mind you, brothers and sisters, when you look at the Roman canon, Christ was chronologized as a black revolutionist. Okay? That means under Roman history, they feared that Christ was going to free us at that time and topple the Roman Empire. And I'm saying this. How can these other black nationalist groups ignore the Bible when Christ died for their same cause? <laughs> See, think about that. They feared Christ would have the power to unite all of us at that time against the Roman Empire. Therefore, they wanted him crucified. So you have more in common with Christ than you could imagine. 
You, you first must go into the book and relate to that and understand that he fought for us. He died for us. Read. He saith unto him, But whom say ye that I am? Who say ye that I am? Read. Uh, 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. He says you are the anointed. Christ means the anointed. Read. The son of the living God. When it says the son of the living God, we're all sons. But what makes Christ the son? See, when the Most High did his creation from the heavenly realm, he created spirits in rank and order. And that spirit that would one day come to this earth as Christ was the first in rank and order in the heavens to be made spiritually. See? His first son. Read. 17. And, and guess what? Christ didn't teach that to Peter. Mm -hmm. That's why Christ asked, who do you say I am? Christ never taught that to him. So that means Peter was reading the scrolls concerning the prophecies of Christ when it tell you uh, in, in the book of uh, Isaiah, who have believed my report and to whom the arm of the Lord is revealed. That means our people had knowledge of the old scriptures. So he was asking them based on the knowledge that Peter uh, uh, had access to. Who do you say I am? He said what? Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He says you must be the one that was prophesied. You're the Christ. You're the son of the most high. You're the one we're waiting for. Read. 17. And Yeshua answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. See that? He says, people haven't, no one taught you this. The Holy Spirit must have come to you to have you understand my purpose. Read. 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give it unto the and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So he gave Peter all the secrets, the knowledge, the path that would be laid on this earth after his crucifixion that would guide us back. Now, why do we bring this out? We understand that even though it can easily be resolved if you go into the book. Why are we in this condition? How do we come together? All that can be resolved in this book. But if the Holy Spirit don't reveal this to you, it's like we're speaking another language. If you don't have no respect from, for what's heavenly on the outside of us to give revelation and understanding, you can't come together with, with truth anyway. You must be willing to accept something greater than yourself, which is the Holy Spirit. Let's go to John 3 and 1. St. John chapter 3, verse 1. Go. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. I like going into this because Nicodemus was the highest learned man at this time over our people. He was one of the highest learned amongst the Pharisees. Read. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. A ruler of the Jews. He was a person that was rulers. He was a ruler over us. Read. The same came to Yeshua by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from the Most High. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except the Most High be with him. Yeshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, 
he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old, or be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yeshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he of cannot... Of water and what? And of spirit. And of spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So, for those out there with some level of understanding... Your understanding is not beyond Nicodemus, who had truth. He came to Christ and had to sneak at night to learn. And he says, you must be born again. That means you must relearn. Okay, what this whole thing is about. Why I'm here. Now, why did, why did I just go into Christ? Because Christ is really the reason the majority of people reject the Bible, who say that the Bible is tampered with and all that. It's not really the Bible you're rejecting. It's the fact that you don't want to acknowledge the Son. Christ is that stumbling block to you. Let's get it. Let's get Isaiah 8 and 14. Christ is that stumbling block. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 14. Read. And he shall be for a sanctuary. Read the verse before that. Uh, verse 13. Isaiah 8 and 13. Read it. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So he'll be a sanctuary for a lot of us, but he'll be a stumbling block for others. Read. 15. And many among them shall stumble. And many amongst our people shall stumble. Read. And fall. And, and fall. And be broken. And be broken. And be snared. And, and be snared. Snared means you're trapped into different religions and all that and can't see the truth. Read. And be taken. And be taken. Why? Because of that rock of offense. That stumbling block. So a lot of people out there don't want to follow the Bible because why? They reject Christ. They don't respect Christ. And he's becoming a stumbling block for you. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of sins that we do. That's excused in other religions. You would just chalk that off as part of your evolutionary growth. But with the Bible comes accountability. And it, and it gives a way that if you stray off the path, it can be noticed for cor correction. But Christ had become that rock of offense. So it's not that they don't want to believe in the Bible because there's nothing in the Bible to reject. It's all good. It's the fact that if you acknowledge the Bible, you must acknowledge what's written in it, walk by it, and acknowledge your sins against the law, statutes, and commandments written and contained in the book. And there's no way we can come together if you have a bunch of people at a table and each of them have a different understanding of what's moral, what's moral and what's immoral. OK, this that you can't come together. You can't have a guy that, that, that's saying, OK, I'm new age and, and, and he's sitting there and, and he's a homosexual and saying that we need to come together. But you got to agree with my homosexuality. The same thing when it comes to the black conscience, the same thing with, that come with any other religion. You're going to sit at a table with me and say that I have to deal with a rock over in Mecca. No, we can't come together with that. That's an idol. If you're saying that I must acknowledge Horus and, and, and Osiris and Anubis, the, 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 the god of death in Egypt. No, we can't come together on that. It's against my God. 
And I'm saying this because we're not looking to deal with these debates or what have you. Just to come together because based on the fact we're black. Okay? Gabar is going in to deal with them, to let them know, come to the truth or be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Come to the knowledge of the truth concerning the Most High or you're going to be destroyed by the enemies that the Most High have pitted against us. And you will have the fiery judgment that comes with following the God of this earth. What you got? Uh, uh, I think I found what you're looking for. Come on. Uh, Isaiah 6, verse 8 to 13. Isaiah 6 and 8 through 13. Let's go. Isaiah 6, verse 8. Also I heard, heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. Go tell these people what? Hear ye indeed, but understand not. Hear ye indeed, but understand not. Read. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. So there's people out there that can see and hear, but still can't perceive. That means they can physically see and hear, but they have no connection spiritually on the outside of this earth, the outside of the knowledge they can have or get within this realm. Read. Verse 10. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. And what? And convert and be healed. So the Most High said, you know what? Our, my people don't want to acknowledge me. There's some number of people amongst us that no matter what you say to them, they won't acknowledge me. So he sent a spirit that would operate in the earth that if you don't acknowledge the Most High and his creation and his son, he'll give you eyes that can't see and ears that cannot hear, which means you can't even be you can't even sit at the table and be in the discussion when it comes to unity. Because you're blind. You can't see or you can't hear. You're carnal minded and cannot receive heavenly things. Read. Verse 11. Then said I, Lord, how long? How long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted. Until the cities be wasted. Until these people are destroyed. Without inhabitant. Without inhabitant. That's why we lost Jerusalem. And the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the land be utterly desolate. That's why we lost Israel. Read. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of it the says, land. And then the Most High would move our people far away, and they'll, be, and they'll become a forsaken within the land. So here's other scriptures showing you what led to our demise and being taken to a land far away, beyond Africa. What verse you at there? Uh, 13. Read it. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return and be eaten as a till tree and as an oak. That means out of all of our people, the Most High is going to save a tenth. So it doesn't matter how many people try to come together and think that you got the knowledge. I'm going to debate this. And only 10% of us is going to make it through this. A tenth will make it through this. A tenth. So I'm putting this out there. When Gabari go deal with these things, he's not looking to sit there and just hear some, a bunch of foolishness, which he will be hearing. But he's looking to see, well, Who's in this place is part of that tenth? Mm -hmm. That one out of a hundred that's looking to see things heavenly opposed to this confusion on a sofa. Right? Let's go back. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to John. Where you left off at John at? Uh, St. John chapter 3. I'll get straight to the point. Uh, St. John chapter 3, verse 12. Yes. As a matter of fact, verse 11. Verily, verily, I say unto you. This is Christ that was speaking to Nicodemus. Read. Uh, verily, verily, I say unto thee. We speak 
that we do know. We speak what we know. And testify that we have, we have seen. And testify that we have seen. And ye receive not our witness. Mm. If I have told you earthly things, and you he believe says, not. He says, we told you the truth, and you still don't receive our witness. Read. But if we what? If I have told you earthly things. But if I gave you knowledge of what's in this earth. And ye believe not. And you don't even believe that. How shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? How can you believe? If we were to show you things beyond this realm, when you can't even understand why we went into captivity, that that relates to the children of Israel. How can we even go into the heavenly understanding when people can't even acknowledge that the Bible prophesied our captivity and we are not Egyptians, we are not Africans, that we are the people of the curse, the curse that was given to Moses. In Deuteronomy. And through that curse, we would eventually receive a blessing for the 10% that come back and believe in the first begotten of the Father. See? Come on. Let's go to John. Let's go to Romans 8 and 6 to show you why our people can't get it. Why there's some that will never get it. Mm -hmm. uh, Romans 8, 8 and 6. 6 and 7. For to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded is death. Carnally minded, brothers and sisters, means you're only thinking of things in the flesh. Usually things that are worldly. That's enmity with the Most High. We should be looking for things beyond this realm. This realm is temporal. Read. I'm going to jump up to verse 5. Go. For they that are of the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Those people that operate in the flesh mind the things of the flesh. Just like you got some people out there. I see some people out there that will deal with the religion because it allowed them to deal with as many women as they want. Hmm. I'm just giving you an example. And there are some people in the so-called conscience movement that have seven, eight wives and all that and brag about it. Why? Because it, it allows them to perpetuate that insatiable sin of whoremongering. So, of course, they don't want to deal with the Bible when the Bible tells us that no whoremonger can make it into heaven. That we must repent from that, even though if, even if we have suffered from that in the past, we must change. You have a lot of religions out there that will excuse your behavior and agree with whatever you want to do to fulfill your flesh. But while fulfilling it, you will never tap into heavenly things. You'll only have the knowledge of the carnal. Read. But they that are of the spirit. But they that are of the spirit. Or they that are after the spirit. The things of the spirit. Of the spirit. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind is enmity with the Most High. And that's the carnal mind that can only get, get understanding of what they would read in a book. Based on their ideology. Do you know that the Bible leads us, lead, lead, leads us beyond the book itself? Do you know that? But you have to go into it to understand. Read. For it is not sub subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Because that person cannot be subject to the laws of God. Disobedient. Why? Because they're following their flesh. And you have some people that will only deal with a religion that would excuse their behavior. <laughs> They'll say, well, this religion is not for me. Why? Because the Bible is crystal clear when it comes to what's right, what's wrong. Where you left off at? Uh, verse 8. Go, go to, go, go to uh, Romans 8, 6, and 7 real quick. Uh, Romans 8, 6, and 7. Go ahead. Uh, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yes. But the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And if you're not subject to the laws of God, how can we come together? A people cannot be a people without law. 
without a king. See? And our king is on high. Without leaders who can come to one consensus concerning the most high's direction. See? And that's why what's perpetual amongst us is the same confusion that goes from generation to generation. And there's no lack of religion. There's no lack of philosophy. But why are we getting worse? It's the lack of knowledge from on high. That's the knowledge we're looking to come together and deal with. Where we're all in the same book, learning the same things, coming to the same understanding. Charting the same direction. See, and that's resolved. That's not a debate or an argument. That's a solution. The Bible gives us this. Last scripture, 2 Timothy 2 and 25. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 25. Yes. I'll start at 24. Yes. In fact, 23. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Now, mind you, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this when it comes to any debate or anything that we set up. We avoid what? But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Exactly. We preference what the conversation will be and what, what it will lead to. We need to know who we are, why we got into this condition, and what's, what is our future concerning our current condition. How do we come together and what record do we use? Period. Who, who are we? Who is our God? How did we get in this condition? And what information do we use to come out of it? Now, if we understand we're Israelites and that we're suffering the curse, then we must use the record of the Israelites to chart our path going forward. See how simple that is? Or you would rather just leave with a bunch of confusion and no understanding and, 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 and no coming together whatsoever. Read that last part again. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.23 But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. We must avoid foolish and unlearned questions. That means if, if someone say anything out of their mouth, anything, and it can't be corroborated with proof, they are to be removed from the conversation. Okay, can you prove that? Okay, that's fine. I understand you have some knowledge. You go get what you can prove, and let me speak to the rest of the people here with some proof here. Because we, because we're on the final hour, final hour here. There's no, I'm not going to argue any opinion that comes out of your mind. We'll be here all day. If you don't have proof, go get some proof. Only speak what you can prove so that we can come together. My proof is the Bible, along with the history that substantiate everything the Bible says is true. So the archaeological proof I have that can prove that the Bible is, is correct and our condition bear witness that we are the sons of the living God. It's the, or you can give me another record that shows that we, we would go into captivity. I'm waiting. <laughs> OK, I'm waiting for that record. Okay, read. Knowing that they do gender strife. They gender strife. 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. The servant of the Lord must not strive. That means it's not about fighting all the time. Read. But be gentle unto all men. Be gentle unto all men. Apt to teach. Be ready to teach. Patient. Be patient. Understand that everyone don't understand the same thing at the same time. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. And in meekness, instructing those who oppose themselves. See, that is our ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is not to fight, not to show that we have more knowledge than others, but to make sure we're all walking towards the same path that leads to our redemption. 
okay? That's the common goal. And you cannot do that unless we all have a source we can all pull from together. And our source is the Bible. Last but not least, and this is just going out to the um, to those that are in the consciousness movement who may see this. What, this is what we need. All right, just for you. Everything else was, this was a class for everyone. This is for you, for those who don't believe the Bible and that are in that particular movement. We need the source that had our information of the Bible before the Bible was compiled. We need the source that the authors of the Bible took from. We need that source. We also need the person or persons who had that information from the Egypt, Egypt, Egyptians or whoever. We need the source of the people that did this. Had the other records, the Egyptian records, and the date of that. When they took those records and scrolled them, scro scrolled them for our Bible. We need the people who did it, and we need the date it happened. If you can't prove that, you cannot say going forward that the Bible is plagiarization from Egyptian history. And you know why you can't say that? Because keep in mind that, 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 that Israel as a nation was born in Egypt. So the information you find in Egypt might just be us. Continuing what we were doing while we were there. You see where we're going at here? <laughs> I don't deny that Egypt was great, but we made it great. And we took our law, statutes, and commandments that came down from Abraham with us. So can you find traces of the same information from the Bible in Egypt? Yes. But you cannot find an author or people or a group that came together at any time that took Egyptian records and inscribed in the Hebrew for the Hebrews record. It don't exist. Okay? So I'm putting that out there to say that if you cannot prove that, never say it again. That's bearing false witness. That's lying. You can't claim the Bible was plagiarized from e Egyptian records if you cannot get the source of that plagiar plagiar to me. Getting tongue tied here. Plagiarization. So we're gonna set that record straight. Don't ever say that the Bible was taken from Egyptian record if you can't prove it. Next thing. If there's a contradiction or if the Bible contradicts itself, and you, you have to realize, out of all the Israelites and other people that have te taught, we have been more so the brothers who have been more apt to hear what others have to say. What's the brother we had on the radio show? Um, uh, Irritated, Irritated Genie. Genie. We took hours and hours of that brother just, and he's a good brother. I mean, I respect him. I don't disrespect him. And I gave him the opportunity for hours just to say, listen, maybe there's something that we don't understand that you can give us the insights on. You can give us some insight on. And I'm like, explain to me this plagiarization. Explain to me how did we fall? If we were so great in Egypt, and out of all the places in Africa, why is it Egypt we're looking at? I receive no answers. I receive no answers. So the next thing I wanted to bring out there is if the Bible can be contradicted, and I'm putting this out there because the radio show, uh, uh, the search engine is coming back this Wednesday with it beyond any shadow of a doubt. So we will be open 
for talking to our people starting this Wednesday. Myself, being a part of the Gathering of Christ Church, a key member in it, I'll be open to hear if you want to become a guest or whatever, to give us every contradiction out of the Bible that you claim is a contradiction. And I will not interrupt you for one moment. I'll give you as much time as you need. You have one hour straight to break down all the con contradictions and they will not be disputed. You have one hour and you can just bring forth every contradiction you have for one hour. But if they're found it to not be a contradiction, we would need you to apologize. Fair? <laughs> you have one hour to bring every contradiction you can name that's in the Bible. Uninterrupted. And we can dis discuss other things going forward. So what we did here, I just wanted to put out some information based on the fact that, of course, you know we've been inundated with email concerning this debate to some degree, and I think it's good. And I wanted to put out where we stand concerning it and also be able to teach a lesson on what's more important, the knowledge of this world or the knowledge that's on high, the knowledge from our Father the knowledge of the truth that we are the children of Israel and that we will soon receive our promise. With that, you have anything to say, Lloyd? That's it.